Hello, welcome to this week's video where we're gonna be looking at emotional manipulation, stroke elements of control. We're going to be taking a look at lies, breaching of trust, i.e. using something you've shared that's personal, deep and intimate, back at you as a weapon, so weaponizing. We're going to be looking at gaslighting, and we're going to be looking at blame and isolation. So to begin with, what is emotional manipulation? What's the point of it? The point of emotional manipulation is to wear someone down, is to make the person who's doing it is trying to make themselves feel more powerful. They are feeding off of your misery. They are feeding off of your depowerment. It is making them feel larger than they are. It is making them feel powerful. And they like to do it because they're getting a kick out of it. They're getting something out of it. They're getting dopamine hits and all the rest of it. So um, generally it tends to move into, they tend to feel quite insecure and powerless themselves. So they're kind of project that out, make you powerless and unable to fight back and all the rest of it and uh, stand up for yourself. In which case, if you look at it from a Jungian perspective, they've projected their shadow out onto you of how they really feel about themselves, put it onto you. And not only do they put it onto you, they kind of engineer the whole situation and keep pushing forward to make you actually feel it, feel it and believe it. So you take the projection on. So let's look at, first of all, lies. Lies undermine reality. Lies change and twist reality. It stops you from being able to trust. I don't always view it as it undermines your intelligence or insults your intelligence. I, I kind of view it in a way that it undermines and takes away your ability to make good decisions or the right decisions that you need to take in order for your uh, to to work towards your future or manifest some kind of future situation, if you like, because someone is lying to you. Lies also make you doubt reality. It brings confusion. So then you begin to actually, oddly enough, not trust yourself as opposed to not trust the other person. You begin, you can't trust anything. Like I say, it brings this kind of confusion. So lies begin to wear down and distort reality. If we move into the blame game, the blame game is about, again, making you feel worse about yourself. This is about eroding away your self-worth, eroding away your self-esteem. I'm gonna blame you for everything. Sometimes parents, unfortunately, do this to children. It's like love comes with a debt attached. So look at everything I sacrifice for you. Look at everything I have to do. Everything is for you. There's an element of blame in that. You're being blamed for their misery. Or it can be direct blame because emotional manipulation sometimes is covert and sometimes it is overt. Um, sometimes it's way out there in the open um, and sometimes it's way more subtle. There can be direct blame. You are this, you are that, you do this, you do that, you make me feel, you, 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 you're hopeless, you're weak, you're useless, I need to look after you. It's all about wearing you down, making you doubt yourself, making yourself incapable and making you uh, depowered, unable to rely on yourself, therefore they feel better. And you start to feel things like guilt and shame. Guilt tends to be more on something, I feel guilt for something I have done. Shame, if the manipulation and the abuse goes far enough, shame is more about you as a, core, uh, as a person at your core. I feel complete shame, I must be a terrible person, I am a bad person, I'm a weak person, I am this, I am that, because they keep telling me this. And now I'm believing it, now I've internalized this message and now I'm beginning to feel shame. And shame is not, a, well guilt's not a great place to be either, but shame is really not a great place to be because that's about your very soul and your very being, and that is what this person is attacking and eroding. Isolation can be another emotional manipulation and this is a very subtle one. Starting to take control of finances, starting to perhaps uh, not want to socialize, uh, making it difficult for you to socialize, so constantly badgering you on the phone, messaging you, where are you, what you're doing, who you're with, blah, 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 all of this stuff. I don't like your family, I don't like your friends. And making it extremely difficult for someone to have some kind of network. If this is happening to you, chances are, you're, there's some kind of emotional manipulation on. You are being isolated. You are being pulled away from friends and family. 
There will probably be the other emotional techniques running as well. Emotional techniques, emotional manipulation dynamics running there as well, which will kind of all work together to basically curl you up into this ball of this, um, you know, uh, depowered, uh, low self-esteem, low self-worth, um, hopeless, useless person. That's what they want you to be. Um, as I said, it's uh, normally quite a projection that they've placed onto you. What else can play here is jealousy can make these kind of dynamics begin to appear. If you are doing well, if you are successful, if you are making moves, other people sometimes try to give you lead boots. They try to pull you down. They try to uh, bring you back down to where they are because your perhaps your success, your progress, your advances, you know, whether they be in your mental health, in your career, in your talents, in your hobbies, in your business, whatever they may be, they then become a mirror for the insuff This is probably the wrong way to say it. They become a mirror for the inadequacies of the in the other person, or at least that's how they perceive it. So again, they kind of like ah relegate it to the shadow. I'm not inadequate. I'm going to make you feel inadequate. I'm going to, and this is where the devaluing comes in. I'm going to devalue what you do. I'm going to devalue you as a person. Again, this kind of moves into this humiliation stuff and the you statements. Devalue you. I'm going to humiliate you, either privately or worse, still in public. But chances are in public, it will give everybody maybe a bit of a raised eyebrow, but well, maybe they're too much to drink. Maybe this, maybe that. Maybe they're having a bit of a tough time together. Whatever might be going on, so it will be kind of subtle enough to not be an outright bang, although sometimes it is. So there can be a jealousy. Jealousy and envy are two very different things. I tend to define them as envy is, I really want what you have, but I'm happy that you have it. Envy can be quite motivational. It can make you want to do something. It can make you want to better yourself. Jealousy is more sinister. Jealousy is more, I want what you have and I don't want you to have it. And that's where jealousy kicks in. And then the insecurities and the feeling inadequate and then the devaluing, the humiliation uh, dynamics, bringing you down, grinding you down, maybe lies, disinterest is another one. You're not just not interested in anything you have to say, not interested in any of your achievements. Sides with, yeah, but so-and-so did better than you. So-and-so's done this, have you heard that? So this kind of like dismissive approach to anything that you do that is good. And again, this is this kind of emotional wearing down, this emotional manipulation to make them feel powerful. Or if it's even more sinister, they will do this in order to coerce you into doing things that they want to do. And then we're moving into the realms of control. But this video is about manipulate the, just the emotional manipulation. Another dynamic that is used is gaslighting. This is in order for you to begin to mistrust your perception of reality. Um, so again, this is bringing confusion to you, self-doubt. Um, they will add in other techniques like humiliation, devaluing, things like that, maybe even isolate you because you're not safe to be left on your own, unsupervised even. So the gaslighting is about, uh, and often this really, really does begin to take on quite a sinister form in moving into people actually doing things like breaking things, moving things, turning the gas lamps down, that's what it's about. And then saying, it wasn't me, it was you. Uh, did you know you did this yesterday? Did you know you did that last night? Did you know you broke that last night when you came home drunk? Did you know you threw your phone at me? And you're thinking, what? Well, and I've known it as far as people will, you know, let's say they've had a night out, they've had a good time, the other person is feeling a little bit, well, oh, I had a really good time and I didn't. Da, da, da. And they would take it as far as to say, maybe break the phone secretly, leave it out. And they go, oh, you, you did that. You threw that at me. And it's, it's gaslighting. It is, and you're kind of like, I'm sure, I'm sure that didn't happen. And it did happen. And sometimes it'd be nice about it, it did happen. I had to calm you down. I really did have to calm you down. It was quite a job to calm you down last night, actually. It will be that kind of stuff, and you'll be like, wow, I mean, you know. And because it works, because it's based on your trust and your love of them or your respect for them. And this is what it's based on. You know, I've got no reason to doubt them, and I can't really remember. I'm a bit foggy, and, 
you know, I'm not sure. So it's about you doubting reality, things that have happened. And like I say, this can actually take on quite a sinister form where the person is actually consciously acting with malevolence with to inflict cruelty, basically to inflict confusion, to make you doubt yourself. This can be so far as you know, things like, I didn't say that, that wasn't my intention, I didn't mean that, you've misinterpreted it, you take everything so personally, you look at things so negatively, and you're kind of thinking, well, but this is what it said, this is what you said, and these are the words you used. But now you're telling me, oh, okay, well, oh, it must be me then. It's that kind of stuff. This is the gaslighting uh, dynamic, and that's a really, really, what's the word? It's very manipulative, it's often, often quite conscious and it can increase to some quite super levels where uh, you seriously are so confused by your own reality you don't even trust yourself you can't remember you know you're just like it's too distorted it's too foggy it's too cloudy so it's quite a dangerous um, dynamic to find yourself in and the last one I'd kind of like to look at here is that is threat the threat of something the threat of some kind of consequence or the threat of some kind of punishment. And, and it can be, for a lot of people, it can be, you know, if you don't do as I say, there is going to be a, there is going to be a fallout, there is going to be a punishment, and this can be like domestic violence situations where you may find yourself ending up kind of going, it was my fault, or, or, you know, lying for them, protecting them, defending them, it was my fault, I did this, I, I deserved to get that punch in the face. Um, it's literally that, it can get that bad. So there's this threat. So then you begin to, you know, your your anxiety's up, your self-esteem is down, your self-worth is low, you are walking on eggshells, you're in a constant state of hypervigilance. And um, it is emotionally draining, it makes you feel sad and all the rest of it. This is again an emotional manipulation to make you feel a certain way, to make you feel lesser than you are, the threat of punishment. And yes, we use it with children. Yes, there are consequences to actions, but it's the way it's explained. It's like, you know, if you do this, this and this, chances are this is going to happen, okay? So, you know, or if this and this and this happens, well, I'm going to kind of have to... It feels like you're backing me into a corner. That's someone trying to talk about it with you. Someone kind of having, without even having to say it, this threat of violence, this threat of consequence, this threat of some kind of loss that you're going to experience or negative, very, very negative reaction, uh, very negative experience, is another coercive, manipulative um dynamic that can occur in order to, like I say, wear you down emotionally and with regards to your self-esteem and self-worth. Some other statements you might find yourself coming across are, all your friends think this, uh, all your family think that, so-and-so agrees with me. And again, some of these are sometimes things where if we find ourselves in conflict with someone, we're having a rough patch with a partner or something, yes, sometimes we reach out and ask other people and they're like, whoa, okay, that doesn't sound so good. And you come forward with this in order to try and get the other person to understand. If this is constantly happening, and you feel yourself wearing down and they are emotion and you know you're emotion not just emotionally drained your self-esteem is drained you're eroded away you don't uh and it's kind of a part you know because i'm not being respected here as a person i'm not being considered i'm just constantly under this barrage from this other person if you even get to that point of acknowledging it then chances are it's an emotional manipulation it will be the way it's done because I think for a lot of us, we have all been guilty maybe of some of these dynamics at some point within some kind of relationship because maybe our back's against the wall, we come out defensively or whatever. It's when it's continuous, it's when they're combined. And it's often when you can't leave or don't feel you can leave because either you've been weakened so much or you're just constantly trying to make it better. You have to make it better. You have to try harder. You have to work harder at it. You have to do better to please this other person to stop this emotional manipulation. So what's the fallout from all of this? What can happen? Well, for many people, it's it. they end up with a P PTSD reaction. So they end up with this trauma and they can get, this trauma can be triggered again and again and again. So it's like, um, because it is traumatizing, because you're doubting yourself, you're doubting reality, and you there is a you know there's a backlash from someone um, within that 
as well. And you begin to, like I say, you can begin to internalize things. You can begin to interject all of these negative messages about yourself, which are not based on any amount of reality or maybe partially on reality. You know, maybe you have got a bit of a temper. Maybe you are a bit this way sometimes, but not to the level of where you need to be constantly humiliated, devalued, finger pointed, lied to, uh, gaslit all the time. This is something very, very, very different. So you can end up with some kind of PTSD towards it. You'll definitely end up with low self-worth, low self-esteem. You won't be able to make decisions. You'll become very, very dependent, very, very reliant on maybe that person or other people. You'll be in a constant state of misery, probably in a constant state of anxiety. Um, constantly walking on eggshells, hypervigilant, checking that you don't get anything wrong. Um, you may well even be combative. You may well even come out fighting yourself, certainly maybe at the beginning or for a while. You may well begin to develop negative thoughts towards either yourself, going to dark places, what's it all about, maybe I shouldn't be here, or even towards the other person. These are all signs that something really not great is going on, something really quite negative and sinister is occurring. And this can be the fallout the road to recovery from this is obviously to move away from the person who is uh, creating the emotional manipulation, who is perpetuating it. Recognize that this is actually what it is. Trust in that. Begin to believe in that. Even if you have, if you do manage to reach outside into a network, like, and kind of someone there is going, or several people are going, this is not good, this is coercive, this is manipulation, this is control, this is abuse. Accepting that it is that, and then beginning, okay, I need, I need to leave, I need to get away, I need to, um, and I need help to do this, and reaching out for help to do it, which uh, a lot of people often do. Many people don't survive it, Some, many people don't at all, and it, uh, or if they do manage to get out, um, or they get left, um, is the other thing, eventually get rejected. The road to recovery can be quite long. Definitely uh, get yourself a therapist, work with a therapist, some kind of healer, guru, whatever kind of works for you, get into yoga, breathing techniques, stuff like that, start doing things for yourself, journaling, try to increase the self-belief, acknowledge your um, small wins, acknowledge your progress, really acknowledge it, celebrate it if you like, ritualize it. What uh, emotional manipulation, coercion, control, etc. like I say, we're not sort of talking about coercion and control too much, does is it erodes your self-identity. So part of the road to recovery is to begin to rebuild your identity. So you could do that by recognizing some of your achievements maybe stepping forward and if you are no longer in employment getting back into employment joining various groups maybe socializing a little bit getting this kind of identity back do some journaling what do you like what do you not like what do you enjoy doing and if you discover what it is or when you discover what it is go and do it begin to rebuild who you are who your what your identity is and don't leave it rigid be, be flexible with it but begin to work towards you know forming some kind of identity again because this emotional manipulation will wear that down you will not know who you are anymore you will be so confused you will not like anything you, 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 there'll be no enjoyment in anything in kind of in the, during it and in the immediate aftermath. But like I say, part of the road to recovery is beginning to rebuild your identity or build a new one, at least start to form it, work towards it and recognize when you're doing it. Those incremental steps that you take, recognize them, celebrate them, say them to yourself. Hey, you know, I did really well this week. I did really well today. I did this, I did that, I did this for me. I achieved this, you know, my boss turned around and said, hey, we were really pleased with what you're doing. You did an awesome job today. Someone in the street said, I really liked talking to you earlier over that coffee. Whatever it might be, recognize it, acknowledge it, celebrate it, because it's all part of your road to recovery. You can take this to a, a deeper level to prevent this from happening again, which is to look at yourself. And again, I'm, I'm not victim blaming here. This is about empowerment. What did you let slide? What did you let go? What is it was that about about them that you let in do that? Was it that they were a family member? Did you fear being alone? Was your self worth quite low anyway? Was your self esteem quite worth uh, self esteem quite low? 
What was it about you in that moment of time, that period of your life, which allowed this to continue? Aside from the fact that the whole point of emotional manipulation is to wear someone down. So it's that point where you're kind of like, you saw it, you recognized it, you thought there's something not right here, but you continued. What was it that led you to continue? Because that is going to be the key. That is going to be the thing that you need to work on to strengthen in order for this to not happen again. Because manipulators, controllers, coercive people, um, uh, not so nice people, narcissists, anybody like that will come along in our lives. You know, the world has these people in them. Uh, you can't avoid them, but you can definitely protect yourself against them. And once you are on the road to recovery and you feel ready to, then you can look at this stuff. What was it that I missed? What was it that I let slide? Uh, what was it about me that allowed this person in? What was it about me that allowed this person to continue? aside, like I say, from the actual manipulation and the isolation. Did I even recognize that this was happening? Did I see the red flags? Did I notice it? Or did I notice it too late? If I did notice it too late, how come I noticed it too late? And don't judge yourself on it. You know, sometimes we experience this and we experience it for the first time. It's like, well, why would you know how to deal with it? You know, there's a, you know it's like throwing someone in, in, in the sea and when they can't swim. It's like, well, you have to teach someone. You have to experience something in order to learn from it. Uh, well, not necessarily to learn from it. If you have an experience, you can then learn from that experience. So, and you can gain knowledge, you can do more research. So knowledge combined with experience leads to wisdom, leads to protecting yourself. So if you find yourself in this dynamic or you have got out of this dynamic, you know, research it, read up on it, really get in depth with it to, to prevent it from happening again to yourself, to build yourself a better life and to not stay a, a victim under it. Potentially, I'm going to meet everybody I meet is going to be a manipulator. No, I'm not going to be manipulated again. I'm not going to let this happen again because I know the signs now. I've seen it. I've experienced it. I've lived it. Or I researched about it and I can see that you're doing it. So therefore, I now have a decision to make. Do I allow this to continue? Do I confront you with it? Or do I walk away? Um, and this is all part of the road to empowerment, increasing self-esteem, increasing self-worth, self-regulating and leading yourself to a healthy, more fulfilling life, free from some kind of emotional manipulation, control, coercion, or malevolent behaviors from others. I really hope that helps. Um, it's a very, very deep and complex subject, and this is a very short video. So, in the meantime, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.